Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today, again, the symmetric group. Uh, I hope I convinced you at one point uh, in the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, I try to convince you again uh, that representation theory of the symmetric group is very important. It's a symmetric group, right? The arguably uh, most important non commutative group out there um, uh, related to combinatorics and counting and permutations and everything and card shuffling and basically everything. Uh, so representation should be very useful if you want to like to have a, a nice way of treat representations. That's what kind of the idea was. And as a reminder, so the representations, the simpler ones, uh, again, my little ground field here will be something like this, um, are indexed by those uh, arrangements, which are called Young diagrams. So S3, for example, this would be the one plus one, uh, there's three partition and you have a two plus one partition, uh, which is this one. And you have a one plus one plus one partition, which is illustrated in those nice young diagrams. So that was an easy count somehow. So identifying those with uh, well, conjugacy clauses in the symmetric group, which is really not, not hard, which is really not hard, it's just a cycle type. And then the idea that you can relabel um, well, the, the, the numbers that you see in a permutation by conjugation, um, but this is not as explicit as it should be. So somehow what we should do is we should construct an explicit representation associated to such a uh, partition, right? To such a young diagram, because right now, kind of we only know that there's a bijection between two sets, set A and set B, uh, but we don't know an explicit way of going from set A to set B. And we really would like to have that, right? It would be preferable. And the idea is as follows. The idea is beautifully simple. Um, the outcome itself, we'll see. It, it's almost as and it's almost beautiful in first, but it has a slight flaw. We'll see. It's not so bad, but um, it's not super easy as well. So, and whatever comes out is called a Specht module, um, and we'll go back, come back to that in a second. But as a vector space, I would like to associate a representation that I call S upper uh, lambda one for lambda one, of course, S upper lambda two for lambda two, and S upper lambda three for lambda three. Uh, so here I have well, my representations of S three. I know that they're indexed by those three elements here, and I would like to associate a representation. And this is what I do. So I already told you about this funny formula, how to count uh, the dimensions, and we will use that by just defining a module um, on what we expect to be the correct dimension. So I would just define a module S lambda one to be uh, the vector space given by all standard tableau. And the standard tableau was just the filling with the numbers in this case, one, two, three, in general up to N, uh, non-repeating such that increasing in long rows and columns. So here's nothing I can do because it needs to increase. Here's nothing I can do because it needs to increase. And here I can permute those two. So I have a two dimensional vector space. Okay, so I just define an abstract vector space which has those guys as basis elements. Um, fine, that's a vector space, and I should come up with a with an action on that vector space. And what should it be? Well, there are numbers somewhere, and there's a permutation group, so you better permute numbers, right? So you act on those by permuting numbers. For example, permuting elements two and three, so it's kind of swap those two. So it should be an action that swaps those two vectors. Um, and that's basically the construction. Problem is, it doesn't quite work. And the problem is my condition on rows and columns to be increasing. So if I act on this guy, whatever, by swapping one and two, I would get something like two and one and three. And that's not the basis vector anymore because it doesn't fit my condition on being uh, a standard tableau, right? So the column that you see here is non-increasing. Um, and that's the whole problem by the formulation. It's a bit more complicated than it actually should be. So the, sh the wannabe, uh, the correct and huge quotation marks formulation would be just permute numbers and that's your action, uh, but it doesn't quite work. And what you need to do is the following. It's not so bad, it's not so bad. Okay, but you basically have three cases. The, the rest case, which is my purplish case here, is the permutation. So if I have something like this and I can permute numbers nicely, I just do it. So the action of two and three on such a tableau is just permute. So this is kind of the easy situation. And then you have those, you have two of them, either in the same row or in the same column. Um, so if you want to permute numbers in the same row, you will always mess up the condition on increasing rows, right? If I would permute, I would like to permute one and two, but if I would do that, I would get a non-legal answer. Same here, if I would like to permute one and two, I would get a non-legal answer. Uh, and what I need to do is the following. 
So I think of a permutation somehow, and I think that the permutation has kind of two eigenvalues, two natural eigenvalues, eigenvalue one and eigenvalue minus one. So whenever that happens, I make a decision that one should spit out eigenvalue one, which is my same row case. So you just see the same tableau and here's eigenvalue one, so plus one in front. And uh, the other one should spit out eigenvalue minus one, so there's a minus one in front. So you just, the answer is, if you can't permute, just don't do it, just put the same tableau. It's a fixed vector with an eigenvalue is a one or minus one. And that's not a bad answer, right? So if you permute, you permute. If you can't permute, you have an eigenvector of either eigenvalue one or minus one, depending uh, whether it's a row or a column problem. And that's a spec module. But then you realize that that just doesn't define a nice action. So you actually need some error terms in the first case, which I'm not going to explain. But it's not so hard to write them down, but it's a bit painful. The main idea really is you permute. And whenever you can't do that, you put eigenvalue one or minus one. And that's it. You need to fix that it doesn't really work by using some error terms. But uh, let's not go into that. Uh, otherwise, this is really cool, right? So there's a very, very explicit vector space associated to each um, uh, tableau, uh, to each diagram, young diagram, to each of one of those boxes, with a very explicit basis and a very explicit action. That's awesome. And then you verify, oops, yeah, it works. So the, the statement here is um, you can write down those modules, and they're called Specht modules, named after William Specht. Um, and well, it's basically there exists such a module associated to each partition, which has the correct dimension, so the correct uh, vectors, basis vectors, which is simple, and they are pairwise non-isomorphic, and all symbols appear, right? So it is simple, they're pairwise non-isomorphic, and all symbols appear. The perfect type of statement you would like to see here. And, well, this stupid error terms, it's a little bit, it's a little bit sad that I kind of can't give you the, those error terms. They're not super complicated they're not super easy. So I decided to skip them. And there was kind of a reason why it took so long. So this is roughly 40 years after Frobenius already understood the representation theory of the somatic group. Um, and it pro I, I can't tell for sure, but it probably also took so long because it's not so easy to write down uh, this messed up action here a little bit. So the bijection itself from young tableau to simples that was known to Frobenius um, but to write down those modules explicitly in terms of Tableau is a bit painful because it's not quite the eigenvalue one, eigenvalue minus one, and permutation operation. It's it's just not quite. So uh, it's what it is. Well, what can we do? It is what it is. But otherwise, the statement is pretty smooth, pretty nice. You get all of them as all simple ones, and they're pairwise non isomorphic. So we have the perfect classification of the simple modules given by those Specht modules. And actually, part of the reason why this is so important is they, they work over, over Z, if you want. So they work over any field. And my C here was just kind of, I don't know, it's, it's somehow easier to work over Z. So those Specht modules are really defined over any field. And if you look at them, you really see integral matrices. You will never see any funny entries, kind of by definition, right? So you either permute, which is just an entry one, you have an eigenvalue one, eigenvalue minus one. I haven't told you about the error terms, but they also have integer coefficients. And then you see those integer matrices and you can take some module with your favorite characteristic and you get the X or the corresponding module over in this case, whatever characteristic three, right? So minus one is two in characteristic three. And the only catch is um, the statement here is not as nice anymore. In particular, those things need not to be simple. It really depends on your field. So here's an example. So, by the way, I've just written down how the error terms look like in this one case. There's one case with an error term. So green, remember, was the eigenvalue one case. And there might be an error term. And there is an error term here. Um, red was the eigenvalue minus one case. It's easy. And the purple was the even easier one, the simple permute. So in particular, two, three just permutes. It's this action. Um, one, two is, is this action here. OK, anyway, but you take mod 3, you get those two matrices. And then now something funny happens with those two matrices. Uh, so this representation is simple over the complex numbers. But now I have a common eigenvector. So 1, 1. So clearly, uh, 1, 1 is an eigenvector of this one here with eigenvalue 1. But it's also an eigenvector of this matrix because you get 1 and 4. But it, 4 in characteristic 3 is 1 again. So this is an eigenvector of the upper matrix. In other words, the two matrices have a common eigenvector. So there's a one-dimensional subspace in my representation. 
and it's not simple anymore. And it just doesn't happen over, over the complex numbers. That was my reason to start with the complex numbers to begin with. Anyway, so I, I think Specht models are pretty cool. They're pretty nice. They're kind of the obvious thing you would like to do. You would like to let the permutation, the permutation group act by permutations. Sounds reasonable to me <laughs> to let the permutation group act by permutations. Uh, it doesn't quite work. You need to throw in eigenvalues, which is kind of fine because that's kind of what you would expect probably anyway, if you think about it a little bit more carefully. Your only real catch is that you have those error terms, which can be described very explicitly, but which go, goes just beyond the, uh, the realm of the scope of this video. The realm of this video. Yeah, sure. The scope of this video. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time.